I was just going through the closet with the move. I haven't hung everything back up, but I've got uh, lots of things. Let's see. Justin actually framed this. This is my acceptance letter to vet school. So yeah, this is what I got February 25th, 2014. That was a really good day. Um, Would you say definitely one of the best days of your life? Yeah, that, I mean, it's like just one of those moments, you know, you plan for and you prepare for and you dream about and, and then it came and I just, yeah, that was one of the best days for sure. And I got to share it with you. This is our uh, program for the, for graduation, the hooding ceremony. And then on the back there, we have our veterinarians at oath. I can read it for you. Just, um, what we, <laughs> what we sign up to do. Being admitted to the profession of veterinary medicine, I solemnly swear to use my scientific knowledge and skills for the benefit of society through the protection of animal health and welfare, the prevention and relief of animal suffering, the conservation of animal resources, the promotion of public health, and the advancement of medical knowledge. I will practice my profession conscientiously with dignity and in keeping with the principles of veterinary medical ethics. I accept as a lifelong obligation the continual improvement of my professional knowledge and competence. So that is the oath. And I'm pretty sure like do no harm is kind of, you know, the synopsis or the summary of what we, you know, swear to do, do no harm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. She's doing fine. Give all three of those. Those are fine. Mimsy. Here, but she's Mimsy. a pug that's over here in the corner. Because she had um, really, really gross ears. They pulled a lot of stuff out. Okay. Of. Or a brain tumor. Or <laughs> they don't want to do any of 13 year old pug, no. Okay. Bless you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi, Bo. Are you, were you eating? Yes. He <laughs> was eating? So we just got back from our ultrasound. Oh, something. good. What is this? this? Is we still have two catheters, or yeah. this is his only one? This okay. is only one. Oh, but I did feel that. Yeah, that's the... fluid. This one looks okay. This one's quite woo oozy woozy. Yeah, that liver went. Mm. We could put some SSD. This vet wrap is awesome. I've never seen it. Keep calm and love your vet. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Me too. I'm like, yeah. Bye, Bubba. You do look much better than when I left you. Okay, I need Mimsy, the sweet old pug. Okay. She kind of looks like Hi! Sad little old friend. Yeah, you're still very tilted. Can you stand up? Oh. Let's see, do you know where your feetsies are? No, I'm knuckling pretty bad. So yeah, oh, there you go, good job. But at Neil, there's not a lot of time to rest and recover before you have to move on to the next 40 things. So some people just have no clue what we have just come from, you know what I mean? Is that already Paige, Dr. Ryder, and tell her to get on the phone with Sorry, the Sorry, we had a seizure and we have one that's about to crash. This is Chloe Dawn. Tell her that she is crashing. Hey, Dr. Ryder, Chloe is crashing. Can you please get on the phone with its owner? No confusion. There's nothing. What am I doing? 12.4. Oh my gosh, open. 21. Tell me when you want me to switch. Yep. Do they want us to keep going? I, I just, know. okay. Oh, there's so much fluid. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm so sorry. It's oh, baby girl. She's, 
Chloe! Chloe! She's she's gone. Chloe. I'm so sorry. Oh. Trying to balance, you know, good old work life and, and home life. Um what, you know, and you've been now a vet for three years, correct? Yeah. What what have you found to try to be helpful in seeking balance for that? Or or what's difficult about trying to find balance with that? Oh, I'm still working on balance, so I it's it's hard not to take work home with you, but it also really kind of will cast a really dark shadow if you let it, so like is this dog okay? Is that cat okay? You know, just all that stuff. Or just the angry run-ins with clients or it's just some of the horrible things you see just kind of stays with you. Like, it's hard to be good company and I could feel myself being really bad company for a while when I was doing the overnight stuff and, and when I was pregnant and doing the overnight stuff, I was so tired <laughs> all the time and I just, you can just feel that you're not really interacting with your environment and the people around you. And, that sucks. Playing with Allie helps. Staying busy helps. Good morning, Sergeant. Kisses. Good morning, kisses. Oh, good morning, kisses. Oh, yeah, me too. Having more days at home, like consecutive days at home, I can recover a little bit more and it makes the time more enjoyable. I feel like it goes way fast and then I'm back at work, but. Everybody feels that way about their job. So yeah, we're a little, we're quiet right now, but um, <laughs> Neil only has two speeds. We joke about that. We're either kind of idle, waiting for the storm, or we're just kind of balls to the wall, back to back, back to back to back to back to back. Um, and yeah, everybody's kind of running around crazy. Okay, buddy, I won't touch your hips. You get better, okay? When he's coming back for Saturday. Hi. Saturday. He doesn't want to see me. He just wants to go home. Come here, buddy. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I don't take it personally. I, I just it. really, I wanted to say thank you so much for. Oh, hey. Of course. This I really don't know what I would have done. No. Um, and then anything for food-wise, um, it's just a big Like all these families that just thank me. I mean, it's so sweet of them. But like when I've just met them for a brief period of time, I, and like sat with them, like these families that will ask to hug me or shake my hand or whatever and just say thank you and thank you, thank you for what you do. And in my head, I'm like, I didn't do anything. Like, I didn't do anything or I feel that I didn't. But I think my usual response is like, it's the least I could do. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mac is, New. he ate a ridiculous quantity of Adderall. Dr. Miranda can tell you a little okay. bit more about that. He's totally good. Um, he's that poodle doodle thing. Okay. Um, and I don't know that he's symptomatic for anything, but they did make him vomit to try to get the Sweet. Adderall up and a sock yeah. came up. Oh! Gomez is still the most handsome beast. <laughs> he did get his outfit oh, yeah. changed and he was also streaking for quite a while. Oh. He was flying around naked. I like it. Zooming I like under it. things. He, he well, he's a naked cat. He knocked, knocked over a bunch of stuff on my desk. He's awesome. <laughs> His mother needs to come pick him up. Tell her come back from the lake. Um, I literally typed most handsome nude man in the building <laughs> on his medical record. Yes. That yes. will stay with him forever. She's not letting me do an ultrasound. Um, the rescue has another vet that they work with in Shawnee, which apparently saw the bloody vomit and recommended we do clotting tests for concern of rat bait. She didn't convey any of that information to Dr. Hodson, who admitted the dog yesterday. Oh, God. No. Come on. Oh, she has a DNR. She's a DNR? Come on. No, 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 no. Are you saying that he is? I don't. Or? I'm asking. Oh, she's looking. Know. Okay. Let me listen. What's her name? Oh, this my is, God. Um, yeah, no. Mindy, right? Yeah, this is Mindy. Will you get the owner on the phone for me? Uh, he's been holding. Holding, I just spoke to him. She was resting in her kennel. Um, she was showing no signs of respiratory distress. She wasn't struggling at all. She had just, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, would you like us to attempt CPR? We're starting active compressions on her chest right now to try to resuscitate her. 
the chances of getting her back are very, very slim. Okay, hold on, call it. Okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm so sorry, sir. Can you head this way? If you'd like to see her, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'm so sorry. I'll see you shortly. Okay. I She's a sad little old lady. No, all we had talked about is like she was standing, she was walking. Like we just talked about potentially sending her home. Oh, I know, I know. He's gonna come up and see her. Okay. I have no idea about disposition. I just. Okay, we can talk about it. I know. When he gets here. Like, holy hell, we went from, yeah, she can go home to sorry. I literally just got off the phone with that guy and said, you can take her home if you want to take her home. And it's always sad when their last moments of their life are spent, ugh, like in a corner, in a place they don't know. It just tears you up a little bit. Your first one is bad, and then it gets bad because then you're kind of jaded to it. And like two weeks ago, I had to put my dog down, and I was like, I'm not jaded. I'm not jaded right now. I'm not, I'm not jaded, and I had to come back to work the next day. And I was like, oh, don't talk to me, don't look to me, I'm so sorry. And they were like, it's okay, we understand. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. Oh, it's rough. Good's not the right word, but. Um, yes, sir, okay. I'm so sorry, sir, I'm so sorry. Yeah, thanks. Oh, bye team, sorry. Bye, thanks for all your help. Tell Jody bye. Hi, who are you here for? I'm here to pick up Izzy the cat. Izzy. Izzy the cat, they'll have her out to you real soon. She's very sweet. I'm Dr. Eisenhower. Thank you. You're very welcome, Thank I spoke you. to you earlier. I hope your family's okay. Thank you Oh, you're very, very welcome. Much. You're I very welcome, that. we'll talk to you soon. This is not a woe is me, feel bad for, I love my job, but it is a hard job. Our turnover rate's very, very high because a lot of people want to get into vet med, but they've never done emergency, so they can't handle the stress or the hours are very long, so on and so forth, and that's fair. But if I didn't have like my work family, like Carrie and so many of the others, I won't even list by name right now because there's so many, but there's no way I could stay at that hospital or in that, I mean, we're there for each other and like when you survive, we could always say when you survive war together, you are bonded for life. Nicholas, thanks for calling Nova Hospital. Can I help you? He's pretending to talk on the phone so he doesn't have to talk to me. <laughs> I knew it. I love you so much. I love See you, you. Whatever. What are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. I'll be at my house. You want to come over? Cameron will film you. And there's very few of us that are have been there, like with the OGs. I'm one of the older, longer, whatever. I've been there for like 11 years. Carrie's been there since the dawn of time. Dr. Donnelly, she's been there for 12 plus years. And I've been doing ICU now for, as a doctor, I've been doing ICU for almost a year. So really quick, when you were a vet tech, yeah. um, did you have, did you ever have a feeling or an experience where you were like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't do this? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> What was, the, what was the good push for you? And I was like, shit, I know I'm not gonna quit. Cause I just love it too much. And then, and, and Donnelly being the ever present, like calming, like she just has a sense of calm. She could always like calm it down and just say, hey, if you wanna quit, that's fine. If you wanna do something else, that's fine. But you're really good at this and let's just, let's just do it. So that kind of thing. And I'd be like, all right, well, yeah, I'll be back. Best doctor ever. Questionable choice in friends. That is, that is a special I only favorite. have really one friend. Just so. the one friend, but I'm her favorite, and we will die together here at New Set Hospital. <laughs> well, I'll put you back in the freezer. I'm fine with it. I've made peace. It's a plan. I stick to the plan. I have to do what she tells me. She's the boss. I do what she says. She says we treat the pets until we die. Yeah. So I just have keep. To treat, have to help the pets. We have to help the pets. They're in peril. Okay. Bye, boss. Bye. I love you. Love you. See you, 
Hi, honey. Oh, maggots. Ooh, there's so many. Come with you there. Bye-bye. So if they're not microchipped and it is a stray animal, then they can accept financial responsibility. But oftentimes, like Good Samaritans, they're just trying to do the right thing, and they don't have money they to do. And they guilty leaving a dog out in the street. Well, yeah, who could leave this, but then they don't have the money. So in those cases, we'll absorb the costs of exam of humane euthanasia uh, in these cases where the pet has got so many compounding issues. This, as I said, if this was something like I could just clean it up and send her home with a with an antibiotic, but you know that would be one thing. But since this, we're talking quite a bit of care just to get her through some of the basic, get her back to a, a good quality of life. Um, being, I mean, I, euthanasia is not off the table for her, and that does not mean that if you're not doing right by her. You know what I mean? And saving it doesn't always mean that they get to stay with us. You know what? Yes, I'll I'll make that happen for you. So I think the cost of individual cremation is like 350 or so. Um, and as I said, I won't charge you for, I won't charge you for the exam or for, for the pain meds that we've given or any of that. So of course, I, yes, of course, it's the least we can do. So um, what I'm, um, do you want to be inside with her while we, while we euthanize her? Or? Okay, sure. I understand. Nope, that's okay. I know. I understand. Well, that's no problem at all, and I promise she's with people that are. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's. What I, 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 she's. We're. We're. We'll be with her the whole time. Have you noticed though when they're so sick or so almost far gone that they just they don't even fight it? She's just tired and had a rough go of it. So at least she doesn't have to hurt anymore. you deal with so much trauma and illness and all of those things like it's just you feel just as defeated when you can't fix it or I mean some things you just can't fix I can't think of still any better person to then be there with their animal during that time that's, and I really mean that. It's our job, man. And I think that's really that's well, really cool. Thank you for saying that. No, we take an oath to do no harm and I mean it's all of us, I mean at some point feel that responsibility. It is a responsibility and like I'm honored to do it. I think we are honored to do it, but it's a heavy responsibility and it's taxing. Yeah. But it's necessary. And those people and those pets need somebody to be there for them, so. Do you believe we'll see our pets in the next life? 100%. I mean, if I'm allowed it, they're going to heaven. The Lord might send me back down, but he'll let me come see them, I'm sure of it, 100%. I remember after one time just talking to his brother and sister, and mm -hmm. I really felt strongly just to share with you that when you were having, one night, you know, you were having a hard day. Felt that and the, the the sweet pets that you've been able to help once once we I don't know in heaven or once we pass that before they or, or after after they run up to their their owners that they'll run to you and say thank you in a way I think that's really powerful and I think that shouldn't be taken lightly. All you guys literally sit, you know, Lindsay, like, yeah, just observing for three days, like, all of y'all care so much. That is very, very clear. You literally have Jody nursing these babies, puppies, like, back to life the whole day. That is all she did with you running around and, like, helping, you know, seeing Mac so happy with her owner, you know, like, that's really cool. That's all I really want anybody to know. I mean, that's the whole point of this whole project, right? I just want people to know that we care so much. And we really are just trying.
trying to help in a profession that seems rewardless sometimes just because it's hard, but it is so rewarding when you get to have people like you say things like that. So thank you for saying that. I love to ask you, like, even just holding that. Yeah. You know, like I know there's the what's the classic joke you always say when you see that? It's a quarter million dollar piece of paper. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Which is true. It doesn't but... feel like a quarter million dollars, <laughs> but yeah. Hey, you gotta jump through those hoops to get your get your piece of paper so I can do the job that I love. That was the plan. I mean, I'll admit I don't really pick it up and like just reflect on what an awesome achievement it really is as often as I should, I think. But I've never worked harder for anything in my whole life. I've never wanted anything more. Sorry, Justin and Allie. This is, this is what I, this is what I dreamt of having since I was about seven or eight years old, so. Oh, Jesus.